In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe you've seen the TV series on St. Paisios, the Athenite. In one of the episodes, episode six to be specific, St. Paisios is confronted by this young man who had just returned to his home village from college, and he was telling the very young St. Paisios at the time that Christ is just human, just like a prophet. And at the time, St. Paisios, who was so in love with Christ, was crushed by this and was filled with a kind of doubt he had never encountered before and a kind of despair, you could say. And so in this episode, you see him run up this mountain at an incredible speed. I don't know how he didn't get um, out of breath or pass out by the time he got to this chapel at the top of this mountain. And there he falls before the icon of Christ, similar to this one in the iconostasis. And he's crying out to him, expressing his doubt, expressing his despair. And then he says something beautiful. He says that even if you are just a man, I love you and I want to love you for the rest of my life. And in that moment, Christ comes out of the icon, out of the iconostasis and appears to the young Paisios. And he hears the words from Christ, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he die, he shall live for and have everlasting life. And then the best part of this episode, St. Paisios first actually, he falls down and says, my Lord and my God, and who does this remind us of today? The Apostle Thomas, who also saw Christ, the resurrected, the risen Lord. And St. Paisios falls down and says, my Lord and my God, because he can't believe what he sees. And then he starts to weep and then to be filled with this amazing joy. And he runs out of the chapel and he runs runs back down the mountain shouting in Greek, Egoi mi anastasis keizoi, I am the resurrection and the life. And, he's, and also Christ is risen from the dead. He's just shouting this and singing it, running down the mountain. And the young man who had told him, who had put these doubts in his head, he's saying, whose name was Costa, he's, Costa, I found the truth. He, Christ is risen. And so, I say this because, not, that, not just so you actually go and watch it because it's amazing, but that today we see Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, come to the young man in Nain, who is dead in his casket or beer. And Christ comes, it says, with a procession. And he meets this procession coming out of the city of Nain, a funeral procession. So it's almost this procession of life following Christ, meeting this procession of death coming out of the city of Nain. And it says that he came to the young man and he put his hand on the bier or casket. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. And in that moment, the young man sat up and he gave him back to his mother. The apostle, the apostle Luke says. And commenting on this, St. Nicholas Cabasilas, a 14th century saint, says that nobody goes to Christ. He comes to us. This is God's love for us. That Christ didn't send an angel to save humanity. He didn't tell humanity somehow to come to him. When he created the world, he created it, like St. Basil says, almost with a nod of his head. It was like that slight of a, of a movement. But now Christ comes to us. And like when it says he came and he touched the beer, the casket of the young man, he comes and he touches us too. And St. Nicholas Cabasilas continues to say that he does this through the Holy Eucharist. And in this chapter on how Christ recreates us through the Eucharist, he says that in the beginning, God created man 
out of the dust and out of earth. But now when Christ recreates man through his resurrection by giving him his life so that his life can be manifested in our mortal body as we heard in the epistle, he recreates him by giving his own body to him. He doesn't give someone else's body. He gives his own body to him. He gives him a new body. And he pours his blood into us, to those, as St. Nicholas says, who are initiated or received into the Orthodox Church through the Eucharist. And just as in the beginning God said, let there be light, now St. Nicholas Kabasala says, that light was a subservient or lesser one. And this new light that Christ shines, as we heard in the epistle reading as well, um, that light, he who said light sh uh, may shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts. This is the Eucharist. This is Christ's very body and blood who shows us that the transcendent power, as the epistle says, belongs to God. And we receive this Eucharist into our earthen clay vessels. And that's the light that shines out of our darkness. And so for us, though, to re experience this resurrection, we can say that, of course, it's to receive Christ within us. And in the greatest form, that's to receive the Eucharist, to receive his holy body and blood. And yet we can say almost a step further that as Saint, he's not a saint, sorry, Abbot Peter of Essex, says that Christ is risen was first chanted where? It wasn't in a church. It wasn't in an early Christian catacomb or the Hagia Sophia Cathedral. It was in Hades. The resurrection was first made known or announced in the bottom of hell. Do you understand that? Christ descended into Hades before revealing his resurrection to everybody. And the same thing, Christ can descend into our own inner hell. And this is the beauty of when we receive the Holy Eucharist. It gives us the strength to call upon God into all of our pain, into all of our inner hell, which can be sometimes so debilitating. And it's when we call on God into all of our anxiety, our sadness, our anger, into all of our doubt, into all of our despair, then we can see, like Father Raphael Noika says, that these moments of despair and of doubt and of darkness can lead to the most amazing resurrection. And we can be regenerated from within. And so one practical way we can do this is a prayer by Mother Siloana Vlad. Maybe you've heard of her or read one of her books. And she says in a prayer, Lord, make me new. Lord, make me alive. Because I don't want to live like this anymore. Yes, this is what I am. But you can change me. So may God help us to call on him into all of our despair, into all of our doubt, into all of our pain, and to realize that these are the moments that Christ is waiting. He's coming to us. He's stopping us in these moments of our pain, like he did, and he stopped at the young man's casket. And these are the moments when we can very clearly and in an amazing way experience his resurrection and experience a new life that takes hold of us. Amen.